ako pre embol. Going to obviously goes up. Yeah, he's a guy. So this is interesting. So this is the kid uh-huh. asking her, and she's so in una coca-cola. This is a little bit odd already. It's an odd phrase. Yeah. Because uh, uh-huh. she says it's inside a bottle. Right, right. right. And she says in a coca-cola. Yeah. Which is a little weird, right? Right. In una coca-cola. What does that mean? In thrown in coca-cola or something like that? No, no. Okay. And is that, and are they getting this, but, but, we, but, but we can look at what they're doing, but are they getting an ambiguity then as to whether it's actually Coke or that you're just talking about the kind of bottle or something? Yeah, that's exactly, that's exactly the question, because she seems to be saying if you wiggle like a Coca-Cola in a bottle, uh-huh. and when you open it, so I guess this kid is talking about a bottle, opening a Coca-Cola bottle yeah. and stuff sp- spots out, right. I suppose, like that. Yeah. And then it falls out. Yeah. Whereas, so she's, she's saying in Coca-Cola, which sounds a little different. Yeah. Yeah, right. And it, and in fact, we would in English not translate it as in a Coca-Cola right, at right. all, but just in Coca-Cola. Right. No, cuando está, so needs a needs a uh, right. an accent. Cuando está como una, cuando e, está como una botella, y cuando como abres se va por aquí y se cae. Okay. So yeah, she's talking about, and I guess she's the kid is talking probably about probably a demonstration about. at the same time. Let's have a look. Yeah. Yeah. Jesús, ¿qué tiene una Coca-Cola? Tiene una tapa. Gas. gas. If you shake the bottle, mm-hmm. you use that presumably, it comes out, the gas comes out. Because you the main bus, the receipt, blah, 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 boom, those bubbles. It means the bubbles. Interesting why she's going to change the. Uh, so, this is pretty interesting by itself because mm-hmm. bubbles in English, indeterminate mm-hmm. gender. Spanish, yeah. the word in Spanish is feminine, so you'd say uh-huh. las burbujas. Uh-huh. You sort of have to know as well. Uh-huh. So that's the agreement uh-huh. that she's got. So I'm just thinking about the linguistic part of it. Las yeah. Marujas, which the teacher says, right? Yeah. Okay, so what I want you to do. All right. Great. So she does, and the fifth, yes, okay. Yeah, and the fifth child also says that. So, yeah, okay. I don't know what they mean, they mean by Spanglish here exactly. They mean it's a mixture. Or just, like just, it just means a mixture. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so let's have a look. Just only one other comment, and it could be that this will change, but I would initially have not had this many people on the frame all at once or something. Well, for this kind of a this kind of a, a uh, experiment, maybe it's a little bit distressing. But right. uh, you right. know, for us, for another right, 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 right. Because no, in fact, we probably want to see what they're doing, right, and try to get some idea of what this class is about, right. right. Uh, yeah. So, how many kids do we have actually participating here? Two, three, four, five. So there. I see there's nine. Child right. two. Yeah, that's right. Okay, let's have a look at. It. Right now, the sand is going like. Okay, we got two minutes with the video. Here we go. You ready? Yeah. Here we go. Here we go. Entonces, si le haces así a la Coca-Cola, 
¿Qué sube? El gas sube. Sí, y también sí, se te los cae los bobos. Y los bobos. Los bobos. Las burbujas. Ok, this is what I want you to do. Ok, so we've got... So we've got, if, uh, and I don't know what they want us to look at here, but mm -hmm. if, if we've only got the last, basically the last yeah. 25 seconds of it, so that's transcribed. So let's assume that that's what they're interested in. Yeah. Let's see if we can find it. It's that's largely the exchange between those two. The two kids, because when it's, it must be something, it must be something interesting is what causes her to switch to Spanish, because she's been painfully staying in English up until uh -huh. that point, and uh -huh. at that point, she gets a question that the kid really has to ask in Spanish and then she switches to Spanish. Uh -huh. uh, but up until that time, she's been speaking only English and not yeah. speaking any Spanish words. Yeah. So something is causing that switch. I guess maybe that's part of it. Let's see where this actually starts. And it's a little bit before that. She says at the very beginning, because she's, she's also starting with English, but then she switches. So that's what we I think it was right after she said goes up and then she switches to the calle. For, for yeah, I'm now. just thinking about this transcript in front of where she okay. actually begins. Okay. Occupy space. <laughs> okay, you can stop. You can do it. You can, you want to do what? Okay, it's right here. So she's she's breaking in. So there's several interesting things about this kid already because she put her hand up well right. before, right. and uh, and the teacher decided not to call on her to carry on with her little routine. Yeah. But at this point, she waits, and that's where she says, "Missing Gilbert." I saw one eighteen, where she starts this thing off. First of all, I want to make sure they've got the transcription. There's already some little problem there. Seems to me. Okay, 118, 117. Here's our experiment. So this is what I want you to do. Tanto es un hueco como una coca cola en un bar y cuando lo abre se goes up y se. Okay, let me just stop this here. So there's some some little things here about the about the fact that. She's she's got her attention. So I'm, I'm just I've been really interested recently in, in how uh, gaze and uh -huh. and face, uh, as they clearly do in the sign language uh -huh. that I'm working on, do most of the work of organizing terms. Uh, and I'm interested in just somehow how that comes from a much less regimented use of face and eyes oh, in ordinary okay. social right, right. social conversation. We've uh -huh. got lots of other cues. Right. In sign, you you don't. And so uh -huh. the sign really depends on your paying attention to each other visually. Oh, yeah. But she's, so there's something going on here. She's been putting this girl off. Right. She now gets her attention. But even, interesting, did you notice that right after she got her attention, she checked her watch? I saw so that. No, I saw that very much. It's almost as though there's some way in which this has been bothering her. I mean, right, and she doesn't want to talk to her or something. Maybe it's not, not that she doesn't want to talk to her. I think she wants to give her a turn, but she's got stuff that she wants to get through yeah, in yeah. this lesson. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's yeah, yeah. Clear. yeah. That uh, that mm -hmm. that she has to decide is she going to put put the time into this mm -hmm. kid or not? Yeah. Here's our experiment. So this is what I want you to do. Okay, yeah. So she doesn't have her full attention mm -hmm. yet, does she? She's been she she looks at her to notice that she's going to she looks at her as it were to say that she's going to give her her attention, but it's while she's still finishing saying her whole sentence. Mm -hmm. right? So she, we've got we've got a whole section in here where this attention getting is a is a is a serious little piece of trouble. Yeah, it's a little piece of work that has to be done, and it, it's quite clear she gives all kinds of messages to this girl that maybe she's aware of the fact that she's sitting there with her hand up and has a comment to make, but she's really putting it off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. from way way before. Right, right. Let let's see this again. Okay. Yeah. Right. 
slides. Yeah. What? Here's our experiment. So this is what I want you to do. Okay, so the first, okay. Yeah, go ahead. No, I mean, uh, several things. I guess I'm, I'm slightly interested in the gesture for yeah. a couple things. One, and I'm not, I don't think this is full-fledged stuff, but one of the things we've been looking at lately are the geologists and diagrammatic gestures mm -hmm. and the way they understand something by making models with their hands. Right. Now this is, and, and crucial to that is the ability to manipulate. This isn't quite that, it's pantomime, but it might almost be kind of like at least in the family as some sort of a... Uh, yeah, I think that's, I think it's exactly right. I, just w one thing that relates to that gesture is mm -hmm. I was really interested in her yeah. reaction as well. So she's also doing teacher, right? So right. she's doing, she's also, giving these guys their attention. She's yeah. got a lesson that she wants them to yeah. to pay attention to. And so that's in the back of her mind. Yeah. But she also does a funny thing when this little kid does the uh, does that gesture. Because it's it's almost as it, she gives her a, a, an exaggerated surprise face yeah. as a response to that gesture. Yeah. And the question is, is that because there's actually something surprising there that she doesn't understand? And or is it because she hasn't actually hasn't heard the preamble or hasn't paid close yeah. attention to the preamble? Because She's heard the Coca-Cola part, all right? Yeah. But there is a little confusion there about whether mm -hmm. the kid is talking about something that you put in a Coca-Cola bottle, which is not what she's talking right. about. She's talking about the water, the right, Coke right. spouting out of the right. Coca-Cola water. But she also notice this little surprise that she does in response to the yeah to the uh, to the gesture. Yeah. I, I think you're right. So it's interesting to see also think about the kid and what she has to do and why she's got to yeah. get. She, she has to be doing an exaggerated space for the cook. That she's and doing. for whatever it's worth, just the whole gesture is done. I don't, I don't, I don't necessarily like the words like a small narrative or something. Mm -hmm. I mean, you get up to this thing and then you're going to see what happens next, and that's where you're, you know, so yeah. it's got that unfolding. Yeah. And the, and, the, and the coming up part, which is a little bit, uh, which is a little bit problematic for her as well, right? Yeah. Because she's got, she's, I mean, just thinking about the problems here. The switching between the languages is already signif signifying some kind of a problem. Yeah. She's still in in a in a, a doubt about what mode she's in. Is she doing yeah. a teacher student thing, yeah. where maybe the expectation is that there's English? Mm -hmm. uh, is she having a problem figuring out the word? And the uh, but let's look at this. So let's yeah. look at it. And it starts with just the hand things at first, the the an animated shaking that isn't explicitly looked at, but right. probably seen. And, and she's not she's not even really paying right. attention no. attending to because she's doing the other stuff. Right. Do what? Here's our experiment. So this is what I want you to do. Yeah, so you see this she's doing this this kind of uh, mom's surprise face as if to say what you're saying is so interesting even though she's missed the whole first right, part of it. Right, right. So she's actually missed the, because she wasn't attending there. She was, a, she was watching her, as she said, Mrs. Guevara, asking for her attention. Yeah. Then she switches her attention back to these kids because she's finishing the thing about this is the lesson that you're supposed yeah. to study. And then actually she looked at her watch right. precisely as the kid is doing, yeah. uh, when you, like when you, have a, when you have a cook bottle, you shake the yeah. cook bottle. So that, in fact, there's a lot of, of, of misdirected attention. I don't know call it that. It's just the attention is going in a right, place that right, makes right. it hard for her to parse actually what the kid is doing. Right, right. So in fact, maybe the question about that, that big, that very dramatic up gesture, which is not really what the kid is so interested in. Though. Right. Let's see what it is. I can't actually tell you what the kid is interested in with the, mm -hmm. the Coke. Let's see if we can get it. She's still trying yeah. to get her attention. We should go back and look at when she finally gets to the <laughs> Okay, you can stop. You can do it. You, you want to do what? Here's our experiment. So this is what I want you to do. Okay, so she maybe gets it when she does that big, mm -hmm. ah. She mm -hmm. says, ah, so you're talking about shaking a Coke bottle with the gas in it and right. then it pops out the top. Right, right. So she only gets it there at that point. Again, I'm just because I've been spending a lot of time paying attention to exactly where gaze goes in any given part. Uh huh. Uh huh. Um, and so the gaze is on her face. At this point, well, and, and she, she. And then she brings her that, arms up she in front, her of, her up up and, front and, of her face. And, and, yeah. And the kid, and at that point, the teacher does this, I got you, or, uh -huh. or either 
either I got you or you know, that's a really good point you're making, as it were, the, you know, the, the, uh, the gratified response to the kid. Yeah. Uh, One yeah. other quick thing on that thing, and this is just inspired by watching geologists when they're describing a fault. They bring two hands together, then drop one. She brings two hands up at first with the bottle, and then when she's doing the up, she raises it. So it's yeah. almost like that, that she's lower She's staged part. herself. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, but again, that's another one of these things where, again, in terms of mutual attention, the, kid had, the teacher hasn't got that she's right. done that little shaking thing. No. But, but then she has the bottle, and then she does this thing right. going up. So right. let's, I want to see the exact sequence in here. We can't transcribe mm -hmm. it because we don't have the tools for it. Do what? Here's our experiment. So this is what I want you to do. So when she's doing that wiggling, she's looking at her watch. Right. And then she comes back to her right here. Right. To her face. It. Now she's back to her face. And she knows she's, at least she's heard that she's talking right. about a Coca-Cola bottle. Oh, it's a guy. But that's just the, yeah. all right. Yeah. yeah. Which may be response to her, but also probably a combination of response to her and also something about, ah, now I get what you're talking about. And probably her brain is already f working hard on how she's going to build that into the lesson. Because now she's got to go into this business about, yes, that's because the Coca-Cola bottle has, and she wants the answer, gas. Yeah. The kid gives her the answer, a top. And mm -hmm. she says, yes, but also it has gas. And then she gives it, turns it into a lesson. Right. Uh, my point, could it be that she's not, the teacher is not really following? Because in a way, when you see her doing the up, it's yeah. almost like where you misanalyze the story. You think yeah. this climax has come early, and you you look at the face, yeah. and then you. But because it's almost too elaborate at that point, which is in fact the the the, the preparatory thing for the thing that's about to come. Sorry, what what is the what is the thing that's preparatory? Well, when about you get that, the hand up that, here, that hand up gesture. Yeah, and hand then you're going to have the whole thing fall. Yeah. And so so, it, but it's almost like by. You know, by doing the big thing at that point, she's treating the hand up as though that was uh, a main point. That's that the main point. But the yeah. kid actually wants to get to the fact that then it comes right, back down again. Right, right, right. Yeah. And, and of course, it would be a little bit irrelevant if you give it the fact that her lesson up to this point has all been about, I don't know exactly what she's right. done, of course, but I guess she's got some rocks in water. And right. she, maybe she pours in water, the rocks at the bottom. She pours in sand, and it's all there, and then it all filters down. I guess it's something right. like that. Right, and I think the water level rises. I think and the water level probably goes up as right. the sand goes in. Because yeah. it's, I think, with the finger or something. But yeah, anyway, it could yeah. be a little hard to tell exactly what yeah. they did. But yes, yeah. because her ar argument is that everything occupies space. Right. right. Everything has mass. But that it reacts in different ways. Because who knows what was in there first? Was the, yeah. was the sand in there first? Were the rocks in there first? Yeah. Was there water in there first? We could probably find out. Yeah. Back, but I'd rather go ahead no, and see more about this yeah. thing. But I think you're right. So her point is something, I don't know what it is yet, but it's something about the, the coming down again. Right. So maybe that's the surprising thing for the kid, namely yeah. that Coke under pressure comes spouting out, but then it doesn't keep you know, spouting uh, yeah, out. Yeah, it yeah. just starts to just dribble uh -huh. out. Uh -huh. So something, so the yeah. pressure release. Who knows what her point is, yeah. but it's something like that. I think you're right, though. I, and I think th th that was the first thing I noticed here, that there's some way in which the beginning of this interaction just shows a kind of disconnect between the teacher and the kid. Yep. Okay. okay, and so you know that long pause. Yeah. That long pause, but between there's a long pause in here. It's a very long pause between the child and the teacher. Is uh, also goes along, and then it comes along with the frown afterwards, as she says, in una Coca Cola, not quite understanding what the kid has talked about. Well, showing in many ways that she doesn't understand the yeah, nature many of the thing. And yeah, yeah. yeah. Get this. It's a long pause. I'm surprised it yeah. isn't shown on this yeah. transcript. Yeah. It's, it's about, according to this, it's like, let's see from the, the gesture up. Uh, crap. Yeah, from the, it goes up, it's a calle. There's a full uh -huh. second, at least, in between uh -huh. Uh -huh. that and her reaction. Yeah. In here, so there's something kind of one second in there. Uh, yeah, interesting also to see her head shake, her, the teacher's nod there. Oh, is it a nod? Let me there's see. There's a nod before, after, after she does her story. Right. It's a nod that's completely uncomprehending nod. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. 
So she's got the wiggle in Coca-Cola in a bottle, but she hasn't got it because she still hasn't figured it out. Right. So she's missed the wiggle entirely. She's heard it, but she's missed it. She wasn't attending to it. She was attending to her watch during the wiggle. Yeah, time. yeah. So I need to put that down just as a note to myself. Yeah, I, I'm sorry. I mean, it's the same sort of deal. You know, we have whatever we've got in, in mind when we're doing work. But I, yeah. I haven't been looking at this kind of interaction at all, but I've been looking a lot at how sorts of people it, attend to each other when they're talking and also when they're signing. Yeah. And obviously they attend to each other much more carefully when signing. No, not always, because mm -hmm. there's also a lot of uh -huh. just the same kind of thing uh -huh. of trying to blow somebody off when they're uh -huh. signing. Uh -huh. And you, you can clearly blow them off by showing that you're not paying attention to them. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so she, she sort of is showing that here, but she's still got the voice trap coming in her ear, so she's yeah. able to uh, pick it up, even though she clearly doesn't get what she really said. Yeah. So let's go on. Yeah. Oh, yeah, up, and she does that. That I am reacting to you. I see you're telling me an important story, but I don't get the point yet. Yeah. So it's an un uncomprehending. And also, uh, I would suspect that you know, from other stuff, that if in fact the teacher were comprehending, you'd begin to get you begin to get displays of comprehension during the end of the hand movement, rather than. Yeah, yeah maybe so. That's a good idea. I, the, because we can't do it here, it's, it's, right. no, it's not possible to get that exact timing about right, right. The, the dynamics of the motions and the reactions. Right. It would be really worth seeing exactly right. where in this little hand gesture that we're looking at. We really need to be able to look at it in much more detail. Oh, it's a guy. Yeah, it's interesting. And the frown, I'm also interested in the frown. Again, this is another one. Which frown is so the frown she, of this? She, right when she, so, there's, yeah. so she says, isekai. Yeah. Then there's this right. roughly second pause, yeah. at which point the teacher then frowns and starts saying, en una Coca-Cola. Yeah. So yeah. There's, the reason, again, I'm interested in this is that uh, the, uh, I've just written this paper. I, you know, I, I don't know if it's rubbish or not, but at least you know, yeah. I'm going to publish this sort of thing. But the, I've been trying to think about where you get the raw material, obviously, for the sign, and where you get the raw material for grammar in sign. Uh -huh. And it's quite clear that a, an important source of everything is in the face. And what do you do with the face? Well, you do all kinds of things with the face. One of the things you do is frown. One of the things yeah. you do is grimace. One of the things you yeah. do is you know, drop your, you know, uh -huh. frown your eyebrows. You can also frown your mouth without frowning uh -huh. your eyebrows. And it's not clear to me that those things are terribly regimented in such. Or you can do, do shrugs, yeah. but you yeah. can do shrugs with a lot of different right. things, with different parts of your body. Right. They all have to do with sort of reception and what we may call evidence. Yeah. And evidentiality turns out to be an important grammatical category. Where does it come from? Well, in the case of my guys, it's fairly clear to me that it comes originally from people's, speaking people's facial configurations. <gasps> but then once they're available for doing grammar, uh, then they're also available for doing the kinds of things oh, we do with wow, language, right, like they're right, right. available to pull apart. Right. So for example, you might figure out that the frown and the mouth, the downward facing mouth, don't have to go together. So in fact, you could actually specialize them to use them for different oh, grammatical see, purposes. I see, I um, see. But so I'm, again, I'm, I'm interested to see what she does, and if we could really look at it carefully, right. it'd be worth looking at how she reacts when she gets the frown, because the yeah. frown is clearly not a, right. a good thing to get. Right. Maybe let's see if you see the frown. Got it. Yeah. 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 She starts yeah. to talk, and right. she starts to uh, repeat this right. this phrase, and the frown comes somewhere right. after the beginning of her talk. Yeah. She does something else with her head before that as right. well. I want to see what the kid does here. No, I'm gonna Sorry. Yeah. So there's, a, there's some lovely gesture here for the kid. Yeah, there is. I'm she, she does she does the, the bottle. Right. Where does she start that exactly? I mean, I'm wondering if how early she sees that the teacher doesn't understand and then begins to mobilize this alternative way of showing. Notice that she already has done it with her words because she responds here with a note. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Right? Right. So before she even starts this gesture, she says the teacher hasn't got it yet. Yeah. Uh, and of course the teacher doesn't have it because this, there's something wrong with this phrase. Yeah. I mean, there's no, nothing wrong with the phrase grammatically. It's just she has not been talking at all about anything right. in a Coke. Right. She's been talking about a Coke bottle. Right. So right. That, that's already a non sequitur, this yeah. Luna Coca Cola. Yeah. It just shows that she hasn't parsed right. it. Right. And uh, it also shows that the kid knows she hasn't parsed it. But she's yeah. showing that from the very right. beginning of her turn because she starts it with a no. And she maybe right. has a head shape too. Let's look. Let's see. Uh, this is a guy. Uh, this is a Luna Coca Cola. 
she doesn't she doesn't head do shape, but she says no, she looks down to try to mm -hmm. make a new scene. Uh -huh. And she puts the hands out to do the scene. And she right. uses the bottle as the kind of the the locale for that scene, but she's right. doing a bigger Coke bottle. Right, right, right. I wonder this is just a, a vase. It's the vase that was yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the experiment. But it's uh, and how does she do I I mean Let's go back and look at that. Yeah. Yeah, she makes this wonderful bottle in front of herself and then she puts right. it in the scene. Right. Yeah, so she does the bottle first right. and then she puts the bottle out there. Right, right. No, como esta, como en una botella y something like that. So that, again, we're having to mimic the timing here. We could get it exactly right, right. if we had the right tool here. No, como esta, Yeah, so, no, como esta, en, she actually says, and then a little break, and then uh -huh. she does the como en una botella. And those go with quite different little gestural right, phrases. Right. So she's como esta en, as if, as, if, as if to say, here's a big Coke bottle with Coke in a bottle. Yeah. So again, the problem is she's not talking about the substance. She says when the substance is in a bottle, yeah. is yeah. like in a, and then she says in right. a bottle. But she makes a bottle here first, and then she puts the bottle out in this, right. something like that. Looks good to me. <laughs> And then she, mm -hmm. then she tops it. Yeah, it's really nice. Is that where she? That's where yeah, she, she puts, puts her hand top. on the. Look, she puts yeah, her hand on the bottle yeah. like the topped bottle. Right, right, right in here. Yeah. Right there, without any words at all. It's right over the right. e, the first e maybe. <coughs> so we've got we've got one bottle here mm -hmm. in gesture. We've got a placed bottle when she says in in rabotea. Then we've got the E. Yeah. Yeah, so then, then she tops it right when she says E twice. Uh huh, uh huh. It's lovely stuff. We'd never see this if we actually just were in the room. Right, 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 right. right. <laughs> well, okay, one or two other quick things on it. Right. it. It seems to me, and I'm not sure, but this seemed also to be going on in the geologist. And Jürgen made an argument to the effect that very frequently gestures are for yourself. Now that's too strong, but I'm getting mm -hmm. a sense of the girl almost enacting the explosive force. So as she puts the top on it, it's almost in a way that you're building up for that subsequent explosion in some way. You no, know, it's interesting. I wonder whether this is true, whether she's enacting or whether she's trying to get it right. There is something mm -hmm. about the expressivity here that's mm -hmm. also so tricky. So she. When, when the teacher shows that she's not understood her, mm -hmm. she just switches into Spanish. Yeah. But she's still not got the whole scene ready in her head. So yeah. maybe it is partly trying to get it ready for herself. Another thing is, uh, sorry, yeah. let's go ahead and see what yeah. happens afterwards, because I don't yeah. know what's going to happen to her head right. when it does this explosion. Right. But interestingly, you notice there's this other little weird uh, <laughs> yeah. exchange that comes up later on, where the right. teacher right. clearly wants her to talk about the gases in the coke. Right. Right. And what she gets as an answer is the lid. And and she's she's got that she she's already put that into her scene in with that hand on the mm -hmm. top of the bottle, uh, so maybe she's actually thinking about the whole dynamics of what it takes to describe the situation that she wants to describe. And also the lid, the fact that the gas is compressed is an equally valid part of the whole thing with the gas. It seems that the teacher has perhaps an agenda for That's what right. she wants to show. Yeah, she's talking about substances and things together. And, yeah, and, and uh, she's not worried so much about this overall. Effect, which is pretty striking for a kid, I think. Probably, yeah. You know that a bottle, a Coke bottle, will suddenly psh, explode yeah. all over the place yeah. when you open it up yeah. under certain circumstances. Let's see how she does that explosion, yeah. Yeah. because she does, she has some problem in describing what happens. Uh -huh. She has no word for explode. Oh. Okay. She's already mentioned opening before, mm -hmm. and then she says that it goes up. Uh -huh. And it's so. And when she does it the second time in Spanish, she, she doesn't have a good word for talking about what it does. There's no uh -huh. verb. Yeah. And in fact, you wouldn't say. As, uh, I don't think you'd say in Spanish. Well, you could say "se sube," but that's not really what it does. You could say "se cae" because afterwards yeah. it does fall. Yeah. But I don't think you'd say "se sube" because uh, I mean, that's just not what it does. Yeah. And you really want a word like "explode," which she gives her later, I think. Uh -huh. Yeah. Another kid says. Another kid says "explode." Okay, oh, let's okay. see what happens. Actually, I should ask you though, this Chuck, mm -hmm. because my method of working on this would definitely be to use the written transcript first. I would always wow. make a written transcript first. And I would do it partly because it gives me a kind of chronological set of anchors. Yeah, I, what I 
tend to do is in a way is it is in a way the opposite. Mm -hmm. I work initially from the video, and then I try. My first step is to try to describe or get down exactly what's happening. Now, in that process, I'm going to be starting to do the transcript. But at the same time, even as I'm doing the transcript, I'll want to indicate where relevant things are happening. So right. okay. my way of working would have been to see this thing and then to say, get that there's the hand, and then go back to get the talk to try to figure out how that's done with, with reference to that. Great. Well, we, so when we come to your turn, we should try to do it that way, look at it that way first. I, yeah. the, the, there is a reason why I do it this yeah, way. Yeah. And it partly is just because of you know, familiarity of working with written transcripts, which have real, real problems. Right. But it also means, among other things, that you can get the transcript much better yes. by doing it at a rough time first and then doing this yeah, work yeah, on yeah. it. But I really think of it as a kind of anchor because uh, until the advent of things like Elan, yeah. it's very hard to have any kind of temporal anchor yeah. for just the video. Right. You can do it, but you yeah. have to annotate it with the video together. Right. That's a right. good thing to do, but right. it's, uh, it makes it a lot harder than to, uh, to represent graphically. So yeah. I, that's why I usually use the, the transcript, not as, a, right. as any kind of God's truth, but as just a graphic anchor right. for further annotations. That's great, that's great. Uh, but I, if, you know, if you start I with the video mean. first, you can do it, we could do it that way then, and then you go back and fill in the words. It would be really interesting mm -hmm. to try that. I guess, I guess I'll have to say part of my reason for not doing that is I've been contaminated by, I think, what people do in CA data sessions, right. where even if they have video, they always work from the transcript. And then after they've worked out everything in the transcript, they say, does the video have anything to add? So you're oh, getting yes. your primary organization through the talk. From that talk. Yeah. yeah. And, which I definitely don't want to do. Right. I'm only thinking about a kind of a chronological organization. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, no, I agree. And that's so much easier to represent graphically yeah. in writing right. than it right. used to be anyway on video. Right. Now, now I actually don't do that. So now I actually think of my audio transcripts as a kind of addendum to the video. So when, uh, I, when I present yeah, yeah. my stuff yeah. tomorrow, you'll see what I mean. Yeah, 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 yeah. Have these different methods of trying to edit yeah. the video so that you can yeah. see the talk. Right, right, right. Uh, yeah.